Welcome to our continuing coverage after the Norris Salmon verdict here on ClickOrlando.com. I'm Julie Broughton. Not guilty of all charges. That's the decision this morning by the jury. Norris Salmon, the widow of Omar Mateen, the Pulse gunman, was acquitted of the two charges against her, aiding and abetting her husband and obstruction of justice. Just hours ago, Salmon walked out of the Orange County Jail a free woman. Her attorney, Fritz Scheller, saying all Salman cares about now is getting back to her family and son. In the courtroom this morning, Salman was seen with her hands physically shaking before the verdict was read. Salman's attorney saying justice was done and the jurors were remarkable and pillars of this community. Also in the courtroom this morning were Pulse families, many of them standing in shock and were stoic. Pulse owner Barbara Poma was also in the courtroom. She and many of the families walking out of the courtroom together. In a statement late tonight, Poma said, quote, she respected the criminal justice process and we all have to trust that the jury made its decision free of bias and emotion. She goes on to say, quote, this verdict cannot and will not divide us. The survivors, families and first responders, as well as the community of Orlando and everyone around the world was, must now focus on the work ahead of us. Let's get to News 6 investigator Mike DeForest and reporter Nadine Giannis. They have both been at this trial since the very beginning. And Mike and Nadine, breaking within the past 30 minutes, we are hearing the reason a not guilty verdict was given by one of the jurors. That's right, Julie. Actually, it wasn't just too long ago that I spoke to the jury four person on this case. He was telling me this was not an easy decision, and he wanted to make it clear as to what was going on in that room when they came up with this verdict over the span of 12 hours and three days. Here's a statement in part. He said it wasn't an easy decision. He said a verdict of not guilty did not mean that we thought nor Salman was unaware of what Omar Mateen was planning to do. On the contrary, we were convinced she did know she may not have known what day or what location, but she knew. I wish that the FBI had recorded their interviews with Ms. Salman as there were se several significant inconsistencies with the written summaries of her statements. The bottom line is that based on the letter of the law, we were presented with no option but to return a guilty verdict. And he told me on the phone not too long ago that just like in that main courtroom, in the jury room, there were tears before they handed over that verdict to the judge this morning. And I was sitting in there the moment that verdict form was turned to the judge. And when that court reporter read out loud, not guilty on all all of Nor Salman's charges of aiding and abetting and obstruction of justice, Nor Salman immediately bursting into tears. This is a sketch of that moment. The first thing she did was turned and looked to her family, two rows behind her, also hugging each other and in tears. Her uncle telling us from day one that he believed that she was absolutely innocent. The family then coming out to speak to us. They say that yes, they are happy, but they want to remember also the victims of the Pulse nightclub. Take a listen. We're very sorry for the family members and friends of the 49 victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting and also the, vic the survivors of that horrible attack. And uh, many of the survivors were there, including Pulse owner Barbara Poma. She walked out with a group of Pulse families, sunglasses on to hide the tears that I saw inside that courtroom. They were stoic as the verdict came down, but the moment they walked out, many of them in tears, many of them telling me they still don't have that closure. But I'm here now with my investigator, Mike DeForest, who's been by my side this entire time. And though the family says they don't have closure, the attorneys here, at least the defense attorneys feel like justice was done today. They really do. As uh, Linda Moreno said, we are grateful to the jury for not making Nor Salman the 12th victim of, or the final victim uh, of the Pulse attack. I think we have some video of Nor Salman leaving jail. The question now, what becomes of her life? We do know that she has a child. I think he's about five years old now. He was three years old at the time of the Pulse attack. He's staying with his grandmother in, Ca or his, his grandmother, Nor Salman's mother in California, Ms. Salman's uh, father died a, a couple years ago. Now, this is a woman, uh, she's been in jail for about a year and three months. Um, she only just uh, learned how to drive a few days. Or re she received her driver's license just a few days before the Pulse nightclub attack. She didn't have a job. And, and so the question really becomes, what becomes of her life? I don't know that we have any answers to that. Um, but uh, 
this is one person now who is now leaving. I know that uh, there have been some uh, victims of uh, the Pulse attack or, or uh, people who were just impacted by that who think that it's not fair that she gets to, to go home and, and 49 people did not get to leave the Pulse nightclub uh, attack. Uh, but that's, uh, you, you heard from the jury foreman on, on how they came to this decision or at least how he felt uh, about the evidence. And uh, uh, that's how the way our justice system works here, Nadine. Yeah, it was a definitely a telling moment from when we heard through the mind of that jury four person who says there was no doubt that they think that North Salomon knew something was going to happen. But the way the law read today, uh, they said it just did not fit in the law and they had to find her not guilty. All right, thank you so much, Nadine Giannis and Mike DeForest reporting live at the federal courthouse for us. Our new six legal analyst, Jason Johnson with the Lowndes Firm joins me now. And Jason, thank you for joining us again. My pleasure. I know you were at the courthouse when this verdict came in. What was your reaction? Well, my reaction was that the jury must have simply completely disregarded the written statement that the FBI produced. Uh, it was one thing to acquit her on the aiding and abetting had they said, ah, we're not sure about uh, the, com the total veracity of this statement, but the fact that they acquitted her of the obstruction of justice charge uh, tells me that they looked at the statement, said we can't believe this part of it, so we can't believe any of it, and they completely set it aside. And the reason I say that is because there were handwritten comments by her at the end of each of the three written statements. Mm -hmm. And one of those, she says, I'm sorry I lied to you, meaning the FBI. So if they didn't convict her of the obstruction of justice, that must mean they just didn't consider the written statement in its entirety. Uh, you know, I still stand by my statements earlier and throughout mm -hmm. this trial that the government had sufficient evidence to convict her. Uh, but I think it's important to note that the jury's foreman, who I'm very glad he released a statement yes. this evening. And so quickly. Yeah. We didn't expect to hear from him so quickly. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure we'd ever mm -hmm. hear from any right. of them. But uh, it's very heartening to hear from him because I think it's important for the public to remember that this isn't a finding of actual innocence on the part of Noor Salman. Our criminal justice system doesn't provide for a finding of guilty or innocent. It's guilty or not guilty. Mm -hmm. And it's the government's burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she committed these crimes. And the jury foreman is saying, at least from his perspective, the government simply failed to meet that burden. It wasn't a situation where the jury considered that, hey, we don't think she actually did it. To the contrary, he says, we think she knew. In fact, we think she knew he was going to attack somewhere. Maybe not when, maybe not where, but he was going to do it. And you mentioned when we were talking before we went on air that you've been talking to people on Facebook. And, of course, a lot of people are very upset with this. But you were saying, you know, it's very different to try a trial in the court of public opinion versus those instructions from the judge. And the jury had a very specific set of instructions they had to go by. Correct. Remember, the, the jurors haven't been sitting at home or reading news accounts, mm -hmm. sitting at home watching this on TV or reading news accounts. They've been sitting in the jury box for the better part of three weeks, listening to all the evidence. They have obviously taken this process very seriously. The length of their deliberations and the questions that they posed throughout their mm -hmm. deliberations indicate that they took it very seriously. And when you are sitting there and a federal judge is charging you with your jury instructions and he says, if you find or if you do not find that the government proved each of the elements beyond a reasonable doubt, you are required to return a verdict of not guilty. Right. They obviously took that very seriously and felt that the government simply didn't meet its burden. Now, we've talked about this a lot. Of course, it came up a lot, the statement from Nor Salman not recorded. And the jury foreman did mention that in his statement that he released. Do you think this case could possibly change that procedure? Potentially. I think, you know, the FBI uses this tactic a lot. Yeah. And it's very successful for them in most cases. They uh, secure a lot of convictions using these interrogation techniques and not always recording these. Uh, certainly, the government, I think, is going to do a post-trial uh, analysis of what happened in this case. And in regard to potentially changing their position on recording these, the jury four person's comments tonight may be helpful. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they may say, well, this was clearly a big issue yeah. that we did not record this and they couldn't judge the veracity of what she said for themselves by her words and her conduct. All they could judge it on was handwriting and they weren't sure that she actually said that. Right. So it may change their position. What do you think is next for Nor Salman? Well, if I, if I were her counsel, I'd have her on a plane out of this jurisdiction immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, she wouldn't see the sunset in the state of Florida. She'd be back in California. I would tell her to lay low, not give any television interviews. Uh, I suspect that she won't do that, that, that she won't give any interviews, yeah. that she will reconnect with her son and probably spend some time just, you know, bonding with him again because they've been apart for so long. But I would yeah. tell her to keep out of the limelight. All right. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your sharing your expertise with us throughout this trial. Thank you so much. Thank you. And remember, clickorlando.com is your home to everything about this trial. We have family and local leader reaction on our homepage. Just go to clickorlando.com slash Salmon trial. Thank you for joining us tonight.